Good morning, Barump Community Church. I'm not sure what time it is for you right now, but for us, it's Friday morning. And as we're anticipating what's coming up here this weekend, this is supposed to be our April Church Matters meeting. Now, typically, we meet the second Monday, second yeah, Sunday. Sunday of the month, but because the second Sunday was Resurrection Sunday this month, then we bumped that to the third Sunday. And because we're not supposed to be getting together any place, um, we're here right now. Yeah, there's our six feet. Since we're not supposed to be getting together any place in group settings, then we're not going to have a church matters meeting like we typically have. However, we do want you to be aware of what's going on. And so Pastor Caleb and I decided we would take the opportunity to record a short video and just give you a little bit more information about what's happening with our church, just kind of an overview of things right now. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you that in the midst of all that's going on, that we can still stay in touch with one another. Uh, we know that in spite of the fact that there are bad things about the internet, that one of the wonderful things is that we do have the opportunity to be able to stay connected, uh, not only by emails, communication like that, but even hearing one another's voices uh, through digital formats, our telephones, and then being able to share videos like this. And so I pray that the things we share today would be a source of encouragement in the absence of our typical Church Matters meeting. And so bless this few minutes that we spend together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I did want to let you know that, in case you're not already aware of it, we are still having worship services. Mm -hmm. As you're well aware, those worship services are digital. Now, what do we call them? Remote? Remote. That works. We are remote right now. And I'm sure that most of you are well aware of that. And one of the things I'm excited about is that even though I was a little skeptical going into this, thinking that we were just going to be reaching so few people compared to what we normally do, the reality is that our attendance, based on your participation by checking in through Facebook or YouTube or email, uh, even a few through text messages, that your attendance has been pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So even though our normal, if you combine the two services together, we typically have 300 people-ish right now, mm -hmm. not including Resurrection Sunday, that's usually fairly high but usually 300 people-ish, and our average for what we can calculate based on those who've let us know is that we're still having around 250, over 250 yeah. on an average week right now. So that's a real blessing to us because it means that you're tuning in. And by the way, we love to be able to see all those comments, the, yeah. the responses that you're having. That's just a blessing to us, uh, especially, as I, as I mentioned, on Resurrection Morning, for me to say, he has risen, and then all of these responses of people saying, he has risen indeed, praise the Lord, what a blessing that was. So I appreciate your participation, and of course we're going to continue to do that for at least a few more weeks. What were you saying about timing? <sighs> timing, that'll be, we're going to get down to things here after a while, but we are hoping with the schedule that has been handed down to us from the government officials, schedule from President Trump and from Governor Sisolak, is that last we heard, things are supposed to kind of get reopened around April 30th, are reopened, kind of easing back into it, and so uh, we are anticipating that maybe sometime in May, Lord willing, sometime in May, we'll be yeah. back to regular services. In the meantime, we do have restrictions, mm -hmm. and those restrictions are, is it, Ten or fewer, ten or, or fewer. fewer than ten. Uh, you know, we're kind of pushing it. What's that them? line from ten. Megamind? Tomato, potato, tomato, potato. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, with the ten or fewer, or fewer than ten, um, when we have been getting together to do these services for you on Sunday mornings, um, right now it's been uh, Pastor Caleb. I think. Well, you know, we had uh, Amy. Um, the one week because she also mm -hmm. had was able to play so there's two and then there's myself and my sweet wife Kim and then we have Roy and Renee who are helping run the sound booth and Tim mm -hmm. and then we've had a little bit of help from Ted so we're still and even on Resurrection Sunday 
Ted wasn't there, That's but right. uh, we did have my daughter screaming in the background. Don't listen too closely <laughs> to that audio, but she's probably back there somewhere. Yeah, but she only counts as half. Oh, but she's a real life person. <laughs> she's loud enough for two. So. She is that. I have heard that personally. Anyway, <laughs> so we are abiding by these instructions because we're convinced that's the right thing to do. And we are still having services, and so thank you for tuning in. There's other things also still going on, even though there's most of our ministries are not. But what else do we have happening? We do have some different ministry things. It's interesting that we have our ministries that are disconnected. Uh, we feel a lot more disconnected. Uh, I was thinking, especially Keith was sharing with you about our attendance, how much fun it would be for me to see what uh, our watchership, is that right? <laughs> what our watchers, <laughs> where they all are. Uh, where they viewership. are on. viewership there's my word where they are because I know that we have a lot of folks in Perum but I also know that we have extended family members uh, of PCC like genetic families but also extended PCC family all over the country so that would just be an entertaining That's thing right. well, so me. I know that obviously I've got family in Arizona that have been watching regularly we got family in California that mm -hmm. watch regularly even some church family there right now we saw some of Roy and Renee's family at least one week. And that's they're in, up in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. Oh, and um, one of our previous members who moved back east is watching from, where is he? One of the M's, is it? Maryland or Massachusetts? Yeah, somewhere up there. And those all, I get lost on those It's things. East Coast. What are you Sorry about do? that. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so there's a, a verse in Psalm 42 that just a funny phrasing that the psalmist says that he misses getting to go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. So uh, when this kind of gets back together, I may start petitioning for our services to be called the throng. Probably not. <laughs> uh, but we look forward to that. We do still meet uh, in a lot weirder uh, understandings. Uh, a lot of weirder systems. And so we have our food pantry that is not a regular worship gathering, but we do have our food pantry that has a good number of people out there that are still serving. Um, there have been a, a full load of workers on Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays. Our timetable looks different than it normally does because of the way that food comes in, that that has changed slightly. And because of our differing needs, our, our hours are now 9 to noon as long as the food well, lasts. I think it's... 9 to 11-ish? Yeah. Okay, 9 to 11 as long as the food lasts. So if we run out of food before then, obviously, uh, we tell folks no. Uh, and so we have our regular ministers out there. We have our crew that goes and picks stuff up. And some of them just hang around here just to make sure that if we need, if the workers out of the food pantry need anything else, then there's uh, somebody who's there to be able to kind of run, to take care of things, just to keep an eye on things. Thankful for that. Uh, our church office, we have abbreviated hours also. That's 9 to noon. Um that we're here, and even though those are our hours, that's just when there's somebody physically present in here. But if you need something, if something is on your heart, or if you need to communicate some information to us, please um, leave us a message. Karen is just an excellent secretary in every sense of the word, and so she takes care of a lot of good things around here. We're happy to help wherever we can. Uh, we, Our church, as I listen to how other churches are interacting with this coronavirus, there's a lot of a digital presence with other churches and we have been making some of those steps as you know I mean you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the other Bible studies we know of a couple very small groups here and there across our town that are meeting over platforms like zoom um, to have some Bible study or just have some fellowship we also I have been leading our Awana club in a Awana Facebook live just for our Awana families they can log on Pastor Keith was counting the other day, or uh, this last Wednesday, he said they're 40, 40 Yeah, we had over 40. Yeah, over 40. So that has been good. And then some of y'all may have seen that I've been recording some videos for our youth group. I don't post that on our Prompt Community Church Facebook page because they are designed for youth group, but certainly you're welcome to watch them. Um, if they wanted to watch them, what do they need to do? If you want to watch them... If you go on our YouTube page, uh, then there should be like the Prom Community Church banner. And then after that, there would be recent uploads. This is how it should work. Recent uploads, and then that will have the um, sermons from the last few weeks. And then the most recent upload 
after this one would be what I'm entitling PC, SEC, PP, FM. You'll yeah, watch. You're going to get them confused. So that, yeah, that's right. It's basically a nice grassy looking picture with a bunch of weird letters on it. You think, what is going on? It must be Pastor Caleb. You're right. You're right. And so you can watch through those. So there are three episodes. There's also, you can scroll down and there's a playlist that says youth group. And so if you click on uh, see all videos in this playlist, then that should get you to okay. those. In terms of our schools, um, actually right now a number of our teachers are on campus taking care of their students so that the um, parents can come in and get the assignments for their students, turn in different assignments. We are still seeking to minister. I was talking with Julie just the other day, the leader of our preschool, and she's been touching base with some of her parents through the Facebook portal for that and making sure that there are assignments coming in and going out. And uh, our school administrator, again, this is anticipating things resuming normalcy. Again, we'll get to that a little bit more, but assuming things resume normalcy, uh, Renee is planning for us to kind of get back into a little bit more of a schedule first part of May. Mm -hmm. By the way, one of the things that uh, typically we do at our Church Matters meetings is to give you a bit of a financial update. And I'm not the financial guy. I really don't get a lot involved in that area at all. Um, but at a recent deacons meeting, and by the way, we met via this Zoom platform, which means that we were looking at each other on the screen as we visited together. But we had a Zoom meeting for our deacons, and we discussed where things are at in terms of our finances. And you're probably aware that several weeks ago, I uh, encouraged our church family to really pray about what you needed to do because the income seemed to have dropped pretty significantly. And since that time, it's picked up pretty significantly. Yeah. And so even though we're a little bit below normal, it is only marginally so. And God provides. We know that. There was never any concern that he would not provide. We just felt it's appropriate to keep you informed of what's going on so that as you pray through what God would have you do, you have that information to also evaluate. Anyway, so the evaluation right now is going to be based on the reality that apparently you're continuing to give as the Lord enables and as He blesses. And as a result, those gifts are maintaining a, a fair consistency here in our church. And so the income level has stayed mostly up to par. And we're very grateful for that. We still have special gifts that are coming in for like the development fund, and that's important. We're actually about to probably purchase some a little bit more equipment so that we can do a better job with some of these videos that we do that are recorded in the multipurpose building. Right now we're dealing with some equipment that's really better suited for home use, and we're looking at something that's going to improve that. Anyway, so the gifts that you're sending in are being used. The food pantry, obviously, we're using that, and God is blessing those ministries. And so I want to thank you for your giving, and if you have any questions about uh, giving or how to do the online giving, you know, check out the stuff that we've already posted online, but also don't hesitate to call the church office. As Pastor Caleb said, call the church office even if it's after hours. We'll get back with you the next day and we'll give you whatever instructions you need. We also are there to pray with you for whatever needs you may have. And we know that, that God is going to bless and He's going to provide. And actually, this coming Sunday, I don't know when you're going to see this. It's going to be sent out, I believe, today. So this coming Sunday, you're going to see on our recording that uh, we're inviting Ben Weichel to come and share. He's in town right now, and he's going to give us a brief update about his ministry with YWAM. We're thankful to have one of our missionaries right here close by. We've actually got a few in our church. And he's going to give us a bit of an update. And when he shares that update, you're going to hear that there are some financial needs for him a little bit, but for all of our missionaries, because this whole coronavirus thing has had an impact on everybody. And so there are missionaries right now that we are regularly supporting, and we're still supporting them, but some of them may be experiencing a little bit more of a tightening of the belt under these circumstances. And I share that with you as an update, but also as a prayer request. So please be praying for them, for all of our missionaries, and for missionaries around the world, as they're continuing to try to minister in different ways, unique ways, and yet very much it's a pressing need right now. And we need to make sure that their financial needs are being met as well. So thank you for praying for them. 
one of the things, even as that is a prayer request for us, it is also a bit of a, a praise, at least for me. Prom Community Church doesn't send buckets of money to each of our missionaries, but we are able to support them with a little bit each month. And as money from the generous saints at PCC comes into our ministries, that is having an international impact so that these ministers on the field, the missionaries on the, uh, on the ground, are not at least hurting when it comes from our direction. So I am thankful for that. That's a praise. Please continue to pray for them because when all of us, the, the financial impact is rough on missionaries, that when we are impacted financially, then sometimes our support for others goes down, and that means that they don't have as much capacity to do ministry, and we want to see that uh, stayed as much as we possibly can. Yeah, so as we think about how we are ministering in this way, um, I want us to remember that that's not the only way that we're ministering during this this time. It's not just through our online services. It's not just through the financial assistance we're able to keep sending to our missionaries or through the food pantry. Um, one of the things that we're doing here is we're 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 praying. And we want you to know that if you have a specific need, um, if they're in need of assistance, uh, let us know. You know, there's not always things we can do because some people are in need of some significant assistance and they're not really connected to our church. And um, those are areas that we're going to pray with you about it. But um, our general approach is with regards to, for example, our, our deacon trustee fund, is that we use those monies for our church family. We expect each church family at congregations across the, the continent and across the world to try to care for their own. That's our responsibility here. And so within our own church family, we'll take advantage of the opportunities that we have to be able to minister in that way. We have people that just stop in sometimes, and there's oftentimes not a lot we can do financially. But, of course, that's where we do have our food pantry, and so they keep ministering, and we're grateful for them. And, of course, we also pray. And if folks have physical needs, if you have physical needs that can be met by someone else, please let us know. There are people who want to help in our church family, but we have not had a whole lot of requests for assistance. No. And so uh, it's not like we are trying to withhold that help from people. Those requests just have not come in that much yet. We've had a couple that we've been able to minister to, and we're thankful for those opportunities. But even as our regular ministry pipeline, if you like, has dried up a little bit, we are still looking to bless others. And so when you know of prayer requests, please send those to us. So that we've had, it's been encouraging for me to see a handful of uh, more prayers. Is that right? Prayer, prayers. Prayers. Yes. Uh, prayer chain recipients. That as we have this new uh, opportunity through our website with a, yeah, a prayer pr portal. A prayer portal that. It's, I mean, it's six of one, half a dozen of another, but it's just another, we try to make it as streamlined as we can to make sure that prayer requests are coming in so that we can send those prayer requests out so that we can entrust ourselves to the God who will take care of us. I'll put a, uh, a link in the description for this video for this prayer portal. Um, one of the reasons we developed that is because we want folks to be able to have an easy way to share with us those needs. And so in this prayer portal, if they click on that link that I'm going to include in the description, it'll open a window on our website, and all they have to do is fill in the information mm -hmm. and then click send. They never even have to open their email. It'll just send it right to us, and then we'll be praying. Yeah, we're grateful for that. I mean, Scripture tells us that we are supposed to pray for one another. It says pray for one another. You may remember our blue cards that someday you will see again when we get back in our regular worship center, our multipurpose building. And on those blue cards right up there at the top, it says pray for each other, pray for one another. And that's what we would like to do to continue to minister in that way. And that's a way that you can minister too. Again, like Pastor Caleb said, several of you have signed up to receive the request that we send out through the prayer chain. And if you're willing to be of service in that way, then just let us know that you'd like to receive that. Give us your email address. We'll put you on the list of recipients. And each time a request comes through, you'll be receiving it. And that's something that you can do right now. For many of us right now, it feels like, well, what can I do? I'm trapped at home. There's really no way I can go out and serve people. And yet prayer is not just a way to serve. It is a very critical way to serve. The reality is that 
what can any of us do? It's God who meets our needs. And so when we pray, we're actually praying to the one who will meet their needs. And so prayer is, is vital here. That's not to say that there's nothing else you can do except pray right now. It may be true under many circumstances that there's not a lot more that you can do. But here's something else that I would encourage you to think about. You know, we're going through this series on the church, and even though it's been a few weeks, I'm coming back to that on Sunday. Um, and in this series on the church, one of the things that we have talked about some, and we're going to be talking about more, is the fact that each of us has been gifted by God with certain spiritual gifts, with certain abilities, and God expects us to use those abilities in order to serve others. And this is an odd time to talk about it because now you're isolated from everybody else. How do you use your abilities to serve others in the midst of this isolation? But that doesn't stop you from going ahead and starting to evaluate those things, to pray through those things. Uh, maybe as the Lord is showing you what your areas of, of gifting or ability may be, um, you need to be just every day be coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, help me to know what you would have me to do. Things are going to change. We're not going to stay in this coronavirus mm -hmm. lockdown forever. We know that. It's only a matter of weeks. And when things do change and we're back out again the way that we have been in the past, this is going to be our opportunity to take some steps that we haven't taken before and to start to use our gifts and abilities to serve others. And right now, since you probably have a little more time on your hands than you have, this is the time for you to be praying, Lord, help me to understand what my gifts and abilities are and what you would have me do with those, both now and when things open up. What else? Well, I mean, you got a couple pastors who are recording a video, and so we're going to at least talk about some uh, devotional things, a little bit of a uh, Bible lesson. And as I was thinking about this video and thinking about a string of things that I have read, I'm going to say something that will maybe sound like it is not something that a good pastor should say. And I'm not trying to be a bad pastor. I'm trying to open up a point that we're about to make. So stick with me here. There is a sense in which coronavirus church is far easier than regular church. There is a sense in which watching your sermons on Sunday morning is to our, I'm going to go ahead and say to our sin natures, to our sin natures is preferred from actually going to be a part of the church each Sunday morning. And that is because, to put it bluntly, you don't have to deal with people. Now, some of y'all may be very gregarious, happy-go-lucky, get along with everybody. I mean, you may be named Amy Walker. That's wonderful if that's the way that things work for you. But that doesn't work for all of us. And so we come together, and we have our nice Sunday morning worship times, but sometimes we kind of rub each other the wrong way. And as we anticipate getting back into the normal swing of things, I think that as even as we recognize the weirdness of right now, it is important for us to remember that other people are fundamentally necessary for our spiritual growth. I would agree with that. Um, I think of the verse that says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I don't remember that. I think that's probably New International. Um, but the the meaning behind that is that, well, think in, even in terms of sharpening, you know, uh, whether you're talking about a file or a whetstone or whatever, there's that, that grinding that takes away those rough edges. And by definition, it's taking away metal. It is taking away part of what we're sharpening in order to leave something that is now honed and sharp. And in that rubbing one another the wrong way, which, you know, that's not to say every time you come to church that you're irritated with everybody that's there. If you're that way, there's some other things we probably need to talk about. <laughs> yes. But the truth is that we don't always, um, not all of our interactions are, are pleasant and, and encouraging. There are times when we've got that, bit of a friction 
And so as iron sharpens iron, God is using that in our lives and using that person, or us, if we happen to be that person, to be able to grind away and to hone one another. You don't experience that right now. I mean, you're there in your home and you may hear what we have to say and try to take it to heart. I pray that that is true. Or you may think, well, I've heard enough and turn this off. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, come back. Anyway, the truth is that it's that being together that is going to provide that type of an opportunity. The good times as well as the iron sharpening iron times. And we are not excusing having bad attitudes. Uh, it's not like we're trying to say, yeah, it's just fine for you to be irritated at other people. Those are issues that we work with, that we work through. And we are definitely pursuing the psalmist picture of oil running down Aaron's beard. Uh, I, that we're still pursuing that, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. We've talked about that here at PCC in the past. Uh, I just was thinking as I was preparing for this short little time that we have together that I often would like to tell people, if you're coming to Parham Community Church, expect to get annoyed with someone. <laughs> and you say, well, that's, that doesn't sound very churchy. But here's the thing. You are a sinner, just as I am a sinner. And we often fall and lapse back into selfishness. Sometimes pretty horribly we lapse into selfishness. And we get stuck on ourselves and then we bite at someone else. It's fascinating to me. I mean, y'all know the Corinthian church was frogged up like nobody's business. But Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 1, keeping in mind that 1 Corinthians 5 deals with a guy sleeping with his mother-in-law, so there's definitely <laughs> some issues going on in the Corinthian church. I'm not going to get into the context here, but Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 1, when one of you has a grievance against another, dot, dot, dot. Here's the built-in assumption. We will have grievances against one another. So when we come back, if you are anticipating, I saw getting around and singing It's a Small World After All, <laughs> and with some Jesus-y lyrics, and everything turning out fine, and then everything going back to, oh, well, wonderful, I'm just going to hug this brother, I'm going to give this brother, sister, a little, you know, handshake, hug, whatever I'm talking about, don't know what my words are. If we anticipate that, then we're going to hit July and think, you know what? Pastor Caleb still gets on my nerves when he does this and this and this. I was really hoping that that would go away in quarantine. No, it didn't go away in quarantine. If anything, we have accrued more barnacles because we have not been sharpening one another. Barnacles. We have not been chipping away at the sin nature that we have. And that's the reason that we come together for the church. That's the reason for the fellowship of believers. Certainly, as Pastor Keith is going to address in this Sunday's message, the word is foremost and the reason that we gather is for the public proclamation of the word, for the administration of the Lord's Supper and baptism. Those are the core reasons. But there's a reason that we must not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's so that we can stir one another up. And oftentimes, your stirring me up is going to step on my toes because that is not my strength. And I'll say, you leave me alone. <laughs> but that is what I need. And that is what you need. And that's not just from us as pastors. That's not just from the pastor's families. That's from all of the saints here at church on Sunday morning, that we are supposed to push one another and prod one another, that we take off the rough edges, even as we have grievances. Don't celebrate the grievances, because that means somebody's being a jerk, but celebrate what God can do through the grievances. Mm -hmm. Push through them so that we can arrive on the other side, so that we can dwell together in unity past all of our own predispositions and all of our natural ways of going about things. By the way, that reference is uh, Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen, and it says in the ESV, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. So that's what we're talking about, that we will sharpen one another. Um, we will scrape the barnacles <laughs> off one another. That's a gross anyway, picture. It is kind of a gross picture. Anyway, the barnacles are gross anyway. But though, so. the truth is that it is that, uh, that process of learning to be the church, to work with one another, that sometimes it's going to be less pleasant than others. I think right now, most of us are pretty eager to be able to mm -hmm. resume worship services. And those of you who are thinking, no, I think I like this online thing because I don't have to get up and get ready for church on Sunday morning. I just turn on the computer 
uh, I want to encourage you. No, that's that's not going to work. That's not God's plan. That's not God's plan exactly. So, as iron sharpens iron, so you need to be here, so you can sharpen me, so you can sharpen Pastor Caleb, and and we'll do the same for you. And we are eager to get to see you again, eager to get to spend time as a church family again. And I pray that this time of separation for us helps us to recognize these things, that even when things are hard, it is far preferred to be with your family than it is to not be able to interact with them on a weekly basis. So we don't know when that's going to happen. Again, as Pastor Caleb mentioned earlier, based on the most recent things we've heard from Governor Sisolak, uh, perhaps in just another two or three weeks, we might be able to resume, um, you know, listening to uh, President Trump and his several phases. My guess is that even when we do, when we are able to resume our public gatherings, that there may be still some uh, some restrictions in place. They may be loosened a little bit. And so some of you, especially those of you who may have any kind of ongoing health issues, uh, we probably can't expect to see you here worshiping with us in person for uh, quite a few weeks yet because you're going to want to be more careful than others, and and we appreciate that. Nonetheless, the time is coming, and we're looking forward to it when we're going to be able to gather for worship services. Um, I think CCA, what's the plan there? Uh, CCA, I believe they're anticipating restarting the first Wednesday, excuse me, first Monday of May. And I just sent out some stuff to our Awana families that we are planning on starting the first Wednesday of May. And That's our plan right now. But it may get shot right. within a couple hours. You never know. Before even this video comes out, something else new may That's come. That's true. A good reminder for us also. And so the reason we're doing all this is because... We do believe that, you know, the scriptures clearly teach us that we're supposed to be in submission to the governing authorities. It doesn't mean that the governing authorities are over God. It doesn't mean that they hold more authority than God does or than God's word does. And, it, of course, it doesn't justify wrong behavior on the part of government officials. And so there's a lot of talk right now going on. There's a lot of emails flying, a lot of news articles that are coming out. Um, We've got churches that have decided that they're going to meet together in spite of the bans. And then we've got government officials who are coming down against them. Some of them may be good intentioned. I believe they probably are. Others of them may not be so good intentioned. They're looking for an opportunity to exercise their, their power and influence in cracking down. But the reality is that it is in your best interest that we continue to follow the guidelines that are being provided by our government because the bottom line is they're trying to take care of the welfare of the people of the United States of America. And we want to do that not because simply because we're citizens of the U.S., but far more importantly because we are children of God and we value human life Mm -hmm. and we value health. And so we will continue to follow those guidelines unless and until something happens that indicates that the government is acting outside of the bounds of what they ought to be acting and that we have a solid biblical reason to disobey those mandates. But at this point, we're not even close to that in my mind. Some of you may disagree, but we as leadership have decided that we will continue to follow the government's guidelines under these circumstances. And we will continue to stream services even when the restrictions start being lifted. This is our anticipation to continue to stream those services because all of our devotional holds true. But as Pastor Keats just said, we want you all to be healthy and we want you to be safe. And so we don't want you to be paranoid. We don't want you to fear. But we desire your safety and your health. And so we will continue to stream these services until you feel like things are kind of back to normal where you can venture out again. But please be sure that you are interacting with folks through phone calls or through digital media, texts. Or and emails. we know that having our online services, just as we've had the online video or the audio files mm-hmm. for quite some time, those of you who have to miss and are thinking, oh, I really wanted to hear that message, you've always been able to go online for years now and listen to that message when you choose to. And now that we're providing it in video, 
and our videos are not just limited to the message but to the entire worship service for those of you who are restricted even after these restrictions are lifted this is going to be a service to you and so our intentions uh, as leadership of PCC is to continue to make that available again don't use that as an excuse to stay home but in the event that God puts you in a position where that's going to be required, we're providing this as an opportunity to serve you. You know, I think that one of the advantages of this whole ordeal of the coronavirus is that it has served to shake us out of our complacency um, where we go through our comfortable routines. And instead now we're looking at, I would say, appropriate adjustments to our ministries that are going to enable us to be able to move forward with purpose. In 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 10, again, this has to do with this sermon series that we're doing on the church. It says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. And then he goes on to mention a few of the ways that God gifts us. But the truth is, as I've mentioned so many times, every one of us has been gifted by God. And God wants every one of us to use those gifts and to use them for His glory and for His benefit, for the benefit of the kingdom of God. We are stewards of what God has given us, which means that even though God gives us a, a fair latitude in the way that we exercise our gifts, ultimately God expects us to follow His lead. He has given us the gifts and He expects us to use them according to his plan. We get into that that routine of, of church. Uh, church looks like this. This is the way we do church. And that can become such a comfortable rut that we lose sight of the fact that God has a purpose for all of this. This has been an opportunity for leadership to say, are the things that we're doing the best use of our resources and our gifts or could we do better and I believe our leadership believes you know what we could do better and this is an opportunity for us to do a little bit of reevaluation so we're anticipating in the weeks ahead and the months ahead years ahead that we're going to be working with all of our our leadership not just the elected leaders but uh, those who uh, help facilitate the various ministries we're going to be working with all of our leadership here to make some adjustments in order to be more effective in doing what we're convinced God would have us to do. Even as we're working through this series on the church, we know that God has a plan for this church, for us. And we're striving to understand what that plan is and to make the necessary changes uh, and adjustments in order to be as effective as we can. And so I give you that as a, as a prayer request again, asking that you join us in praying that God would give clear direction for your pastors, for your deacons, the trustees, for all of the ministry leaders, for all of us as a church family, that we would not just return to normal in a few weeks or a month or so and get back into that, that rut, but that we would see this as a time when God really honed us, sharpened us, um, polished us up, and got us ready to jump on board with serving God with our whole hearts. Because church matters. Oh, yeah, see what that. I did there? <laughs> it does, and we're grateful for that. So we wanted to give you this kind of an update just to let you know what's going on and to encourage you. And we're going to look forward to worshiping together on Sunday and continue to minister in every possible way that we can. And we appreciate your prayers. You want to lead us in prayer? Yeah. Father, thank you for our church. I am blessed to get to be a part of this family. As I think about folks that I just kind of took for granted that I would see them every week. And now it's been over a month since I have seen many of them. Um, Oh, just nearly, if not quite over. Lord, I am grateful for the relationships that we have, for the much good that is accomplished at PCC, that as Pastor Keith says, that we're going to be honing things. Uh, we Our desire is never just change for change's sake, 
our desire is always to be better stewards, is to be more in tune with what your plan is for us. Thank you for the good that is accomplished here on a regular basis under normal circumstances, the good that's accomplished here right now when we're in a bit of a flux state. I do pray for wisdom for us as we move forward, that we would be able to move forward well, that we would be able to move forward as one, that we would be on the same page uh, in accordance with what your plan is for us as a body. I pray for right hearts for us as we anticipate eagerly reuniting again in a few weeks or a month or whenever, that we would be ready to be the church more than we ever have been before, uh, that this time of distancing would help us to recognize that it, the church is more than just showing up for an hour and 15, hour and 20 on Sunday morning and then going home, but this is being part of a body, it's being part of a family, it's being part of a building. And Lord, I pray that we would be more and more of that so that you can receive all of the glory. Thank you that you saved all of us, not because we had our act together, not because we had good ideas about how we might be able to expand your kingdom, not because we're nice, not because we interact with other people well. You saved us simply and exclusively because of your goodness and because of your good plan and your good pleasure. And we praise you for that. Please keep my family close to you as we continue with this quarantine schedule. We pray for wisdom for our leaders, that you would grant them clarity as to how they should proceed and that they would care for our the people of this land the best they can. Remind us, God, that whining about leaders with whom we disagree is not the most efficient plan. Lord, I say that to myself. Please help us to pray for those who are in authority, whether or not we agree with them on anything. Uh, help them to make good decisions. Lord, again, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that none of this catches you off guard, that you have a good plan for us, for our joy, and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless. Are we still on? We are still on.